Welcome back. I wanted to share with you a couple of new visualization objects that we have in ClickSense. You may have received an email or saw something online and it said distribution plot. It said box plot. And you're like, but I wanted a spinning tree diagram that made espresso for me in the mornings. And you're like, eh, I don't really see a value in these things. What's the big deal? I'm going to help you understand what the big deal is because I think it paints a, helps you paint a bigger, truer picture of your data. You know you're not going to walk through your data looking at it, but I wanted to show you here's the raw data. I've got physicians, I've got encounters, I've got a length of stay for these encounters. I could scroll through here, I could sort it different ways. You know we're not really doing analytics based on that. So you'd say, oh, please aggregate that for me. So I'd aggregate it and I'd tell you, ooh, Dr. Doe has an average of 10.5 and Dr. Smith has an average of 10.1 and we say ah what the heck those are pretty close um as long as we're making money who cares not a big deal or you may say oh come on you're really going to show me these numbers in a table no 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 no, no. i want to see like a bar chart or something really pretty you know this is an executive dashboard i need to put it pretty right and i might put the values in here maybe i turn this horizontally for you maybe we change the colors Dr. Doe has a certain color scheme throughout. Dr. Smith has a color scheme throughout. Regardless how we paint this picture, you're missing something here. What these new objects do is help you understand what it was you might have been missing. Because again, these averages are close. Maybe we care, maybe we don't really care. A distribution plot is going to show you and plot each of these encounters. And so I could see for Dr. Doe, he's got a very tight process. While the average is higher, I know he's got a very, very clean process. And if you ever read my article on visualizing length of stays, you would understand process to me is king. Because if I know I've got a tight process, if I improve that process, I can really actually change the needle a lot. So I like seeing a nice tight bunch of data um, that tells me there's a clean process. Dr. Smith is kind of all over the board, but these numbers in this case, oh, it's a bad process. Well, let's actually take a look here. I've got a big cluster of data down here. That's one process. I've got a bunch of numbers over here. So there's kind of a second cluster here. If I were to exclude these three outliers and just look at that data, I might think, ah, it's kind of a tight process, but to me, it's really not. It's two different processes. So something's going on. We don't have a bunch of values in the middle that was either really good or really towards this end. Now, overall, this average would drop dramatically if I got rid of some of these outliers. And what might these outliers be? These might be just they acquired something while they were visiting with us. Um, they could possibly be complications that nobody documented. And so the coders had to write these as the exact same um, DRGs or ICD codes. Um, and so they're they're outliers right so if i looked at this i know the average would come down greatly and they might look super duper the truth is to me we've got some process issue there right they're doing things great and they're doing things not necessarily so great um, that, that would be kind of at this higher end here so that's what a distribution block plot does for you big difference than looking at numbers isn't there there's a story behind there and maybe this tells us we need to start looking into those at specific encounters so that we know to go figure out, hey, what did we do wrong with documentation? Did we code this wrong? Or what's going on that we had some true outliers? A box plot is for those a little bit more scientific. Those who really understand statistics and they don't want to just guess based on dots. Dalton, that doesn't mean anything. There might be three dots here, but 150 there and 150 there. So it's not really tight. So I'm guessing at some things. A box plot pulls that together and shows me kind of some bounds. I'm not going to explain all that a box plot does. 
other than to say, hey, look, here's what it does for you that is a little bit different. Scientifically, it's grouping them together and showing me information that says, hey, this process, other than these outliers, is actually tighter than that process in terms of a range. So this range, everything's sliding down um, much below this. Yes, there were a couple of low values, but the vast bulk of these, the middle of it is much, much higher than what the middle chunk of these cases is. Um, for those of you who do understand box plots, yes, you can change it. Um, all the normal things that you would think you could do, there are settings to change those things. The nice thing is it can clearly show you the outliers. I'm not guessing that the numbers are big because this number might have been here and here and here. Scientifically, this is telling me these are in fact outliers. Um, and so I, I know that it's a true outlier. So I, I know you wanted that spinning tree diagram that made espresso for you, but I hope that you understand after looking at this, there really is some tremendous value um, for those of you that care about the data um, in this distribution plot and the box plot 